Well, good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, uh, the 11th, 12th, 11th, something like that. And here we are in the living room with Rue and her kittens and Muriel's kittens and maybe Muriel. And you can see some of them have discovered the cat run for the very first time this morning. That's Tommy out there on the shelf. Uh, the green collar is Gambit. And uh, who's that? Is that Sham in the pink collar? Is there a pink collar? A little hard for me to see from here. But I'm pretty sure I saw Sham and Gambit both go out there with yeah, Mom, Rue. Oh, okay. Well, then that's a white collar. Oh, I do see it now. Yeah, okay. So the white collar is a uh, gimmick or gimme. Hi, gimme. So uh, what's news after the weekend? I'm not even sure. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, okay, let's start in on health, because uh, health is news, for sure. Uh, the kittens and their moms uh, have all had, we've had a lot of vomiting and diarrhea going around the academy lately, a little bit of both, uh, maybe a lot bit of both, and so we've been working on that, um, along with uh, working on uh, Mural, specifically trying to get over what was sort of remaining of her sneezes and her, uh, you know, snotty, um, URI, not URI, whatever it is that's causing her to sneeze all the time. Um, probably the same thing that's causing the kittens to have uh, um, crusty eyes very often. So we're working on all of that. And to sort of tell you how it's going, uh, we took Mural to the vet this morning for a follow-up on her blood work. She needed to get more blood work done after having been fasted to properly test her for pancreatitis. Uh, which is what the doctor believes it is, but we tested for some other stuff too. The results for that could be a couple few days because they got to send that one off to a special lab. Uh, but we're doing that with Mural. In the meantime, everybody's getting a whole bunch of medicine. Uh, there's Sham, by the way. The kittens are on metronidazole as of this morning. Metronidazole, of course, is a antibiotic that has a, a good application to gastrointestinal problems. Uh, which should address the diarrhea, we hope. Very common um, thing to use in kittens. Some fosters that have easy access to these things even use metronidazole prophylactically on all of their kittens. Uh, so it's pretty harmless. And, uh, and in fact, we, this is sort of prophylactically using it since uh, I'm not keeping precise track of everybody that's got bad poops or good poops and just giving it to the ones that we know are good. We're just giving it to everybody. Just knock it all out. Here's Etch, by the way. You guys know Etch with his extra long thumbs. Yeah, okay, buddy. I'll set you down there. Hi. So uh, so it's nothing unusual, though. Uh, the, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, diarrhea and the amount of vomiting and the amount of uh, weight fluctuations that the kittens are having, all very normal stuff. I'm not the, the least bit concerned. Well, maybe I'm the least bit concerned about it. Let's say that. I'm the least bit concerned about it. So uh, not a big deal, I don't think. Um, but we're definitely keeping an eye on it and treating and doing all that we can do for them. And I expect good outcomes all around. Etch is following me for some reason. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? Oh, uh, metronidazole, is all I should also mention. Tastes awful. Uh, of all the medications to have to give to kittens, uh, Metro is one of those that they do not enjoy very much at all, do they? <gasps> Look at that face. Oh, that's great light right here. You look real good, buddy. So uh, that's where we are on that. Uh, just taking care of everybody. As far as the rest of it goes, oh, you're going to notice the mom cats. You probably already noticed Rue uh, are wearing their suits uh, wherever Mural is. She's got a suit on too. That's not, that's Maggie. She's one of our cats. <laughs> Oh, here we go. So here's what you're going to notice a lot of uh, on the stream. Kittens uh, confused by the fact that Mural is wearing a suit and they're yelling too. Lots of meows and yelling. They're very upset that they can't find her bits to nurse on. But that's why she's wearing it. Um, you know, as we're going through her situation and trying to make her feel better, 
one of the first things that we need to do is get her to stop nursing because she's spending so many calories and so much of her, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, water, I guess. Uh, what am I trying to say there? Hydration. She's using so much of her calories and hydration taking care of the kittens uh, that I think it sort of costs us a bit in helping her to recover from whatever's got her down a little bit. So by uh, stopping the kids from nursing, and uh, I should mention this is not a 100% effective barrier. Once in a while, they're managing to find a way uh, under the suit. Uh, they so, certainly will keep trying. Uh, but I think having her wear the suit is probably better for her and for her kittens than the alternative, which would be just not letting her see her kittens at all uh, for you know a week or two while she stops uh, giving any milk. So uh, I think this is the best way to do it. We, we put her in a suit. Uh, you know, suit's not the best thing in the world, but it's certainly better than keeping her separate from her kids for a long time, uh, which is, you know, the other option. So doing the best we can with that. Uh, Rue is on uh, also wearing a suit for basically the same reason. The kittens don't need to nurse anymore at this point. They're doing it just because they can, uh, but they all eat very well. So it's not, it's not like they need to be doing that. <laughs> I think that's it for the, the news. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is that everybody's sick, but everybody's healthy, um, sick, healthy, sick. Uh, you know, the kind of thing that's just not a big deal, but we're taking care of it. So there you go. Uh, let's see, the last time that I talked to all of you, I think I still had to put up the blog post, or maybe I had just done it. Uh, so if you have not been to our website lately, you will want to go to our website, kitten.academy, and uh, look at our most recent blog post, which involves pictures of all of the kittens when they were a little bit younger, because it's a few weeks older now, uh, the, the blog post, I mean. So... Um, the photos, I mean, on the blog post. They're, they're a few weeks, uh, they came from a few weeks ago. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. So uh, definitely, uh, if you haven't been, check it out. You'll see some cute pictures of these kids. Uh, the younger kids, I think it was right about the time that their eyes were open for the first time. And uh, the older kids, a couple weeks older than that, of course. And uh, it's really high on my list of priorities to get new photos and a new blog post with recent pictures in it. That's something I'm working on uh, as much as I can. I'm also still in the mode of taking it easy, though. Uh, very much in the mode of taking it easy. So, there you have it. What's up, Mural? Those kids are making so much noise. They're very demanding. Oh, here comes Tommy. I think we saw Tommy already. He was out in the cat run, right? So Tommy's the older kitten, of course, that's not actually from either of these classes, but we've been trying slowly to integrate him. And I got to tell you, he's getting better and better every day. I still think that, you know, by the time he goes home with his adopter, he's going to be in pretty good shape. But whoever does adopt him is going to have to be aware of his, you know, his little quirks that, that may be uh, something for them to continue to work on with him, you know, uh, work on not letting him bite anybody and not letting him get too riled up and carried away. Uh, so he'll be a little bit of work for whoever adopts him, but I feel really good about him so far. He still gets real excited, but he's learned to sort of pull his punches with us at least, and I think he's learning the same thing with the kittens where um, he's gotten to the point where now he doesn't try to bite your finger off anymore. He just sort of uh, does like kittens do with a, he'll put his teeth on it a little bit, but he knows not to, be, not to use any force. And like Loganberry does, where he just, Loganberry still will put his teeth on me. He's, you know, quote unquote bitey, but not in a bitey way, just in a, you know, he's just putting his teeth on you way. So that's about where Tommy is for us. Uh, although he still does, like if he's wrestling with one of the kittens and the kitten starts saying it's too much and the kitten hisses uh, and, you know, starts sort of calling out a little bit, uh, Tommy, normally he'll back off a little, but sometimes he doesn't. So we still have to keep an eye on him and that means we still are not having him in the room full time. 
But we're getting very close to having him in the room with the kittens full time. So. Uh, so hopefully. <sighs> Look at that. Look, really going to work her way in there. That's Trace, by the way. I think she might have found one. That's cheating, Trace. You know you're not supposed to be doing that. Well, like I said, it's not it's not a huge deal if they do nurse a little bit. We're just trying to cut it down so that she doesn't lose quite so many calories that way. Um, it'd be best, you know, if they didn't nurse at all, but uh, no need for us to, you know, panic about it and try everything just to get that last little bit of nursing done with. This, by the way, uh, is the only um, fluffy cat, I think, from Rue's litter. Look how fluffy he is. That is um, Hustle. Hustle, very fluffy kitten. Look at that. Do you see the floof? I think you do. Definitely going to grow up to be a long hair. He's also got one of those eye goobers that I was talking about. A little bit of eye crust. Buddy, can I have that, please? Okay, let's just... You got a close-up. You're on close-up, buddy. You should have gone to makeup before you came in here. I know. Hustle's getting a reputation already as being the, uh, I don't know, the sort of laid-back Hal of the class, where he just uh, very frequently likes to sort of nap, or when play is going on, he'll sort of uh, hang out and wait for the toy to come to him. But he got very excited yesterday when we started playing with the tissue in the pod. So I put a bunch of tissue in the pod just for fun. Oh, man, and Hustle was really showing that he can turn it on when he wants to because that was super, super engaging last night. And then here we are today. I don't think he's interested anymore. So you know what? That's old. He's like, I've completely explored all of that. Uh, looks like we got our video issue again. Uh, I think I got to knock this all the way out to get it back. Hang on. There we go. I hope we're back. I think we're back. Uh, sorry, that comes up once in a while. I don't know what to do about it. Oh, I hear somebody asking about the chirping noise. It's this cricket toy. It's this little thing right here. If you just give it a little, oh, there you go. If you touch it too much, it, it makes the little cricket sound. The kittens don't seem to care very much for it. Kids, this is ridiculous. So when I see them trying to nurse on her, I will pick them up and put them by the food bowl. And normally they'll just dig right in. Uh, several times I've caught, especially the younger kids, like over here meowing and wishing that they could nurse. And then I take them to the food dish and they just dive right in almost like, oh yeah, I forgot. We have that option too. Uh, but I think they're actually all pretty well fed right now. They had big breakfasts. So they just want to nurse just because they could, because they want to hang out with mom, not because they need it. Still, uh, why don't we take a minute and see if some of them will do what I just said they would. Uh, walk them over here. Just a little bit. There we go, right there, pal. Come on, dive right in. That's some good food right there. You can do that. You can do that instead of what you were doing. Well, we got one taker. One yes and one nope. Going back to mom. Hope springs eternal. Yeah, okay, buddy. Oh, he's so noisy. I want you to hear him eating. Sometimes you get the impression that they're almost half nursing at the food dish, don't you? Let's see if we can get these torties to uh, take a break too for just a minute. Even though I think I think they actually got in there. Are you nursing on a? Oh, she's not though. She's just nursing on a bit of mom's hair over here. There's not even a nipple there. She's just nursing on mom's her hair because that's comforting. It's real sweet, isn't it? I mean, it's literally comfort nursing. A lot of times, um, when when kittens are old enough that they don't need to nurse anymore, but they do it anyway, we call that comfort nursing. Um, but, uh, in this case, they're, they're not even really nursing. <laughs> it's like sucking on a blanket comfort nursing, right? Anyway, 
Uh, I'm sure that that is comforting for them, but let's just see if they want any food or if they just gonna go back to mom, that's fine too. Oh, so this is Trace, by the way. Uh, Trace is one of the two Torty girls with uh, the polydactyl thumbs. And the other one here is Splotch. And uh, not Splotch, no, Squiggle. I always get those names confused. Squiggle, Squiggle is uh, also a Torty girl. As you can clearly see, little squigs. All right, they're both so fun. He's still, he's still got his face buried in there. Good job, Edge. Well, I think we've seen basically everybody. I've lost track of who has been over to say hi to us and who has not. Uh, oh, here's our donkey riding on the ball toy. And over here we have Caper, right there, Caper. Hi, buddy. And hi, Jinx. And our camera's gone out a second time in one shot. What is going on here? Hang on, let me, uh... oh boy. Well, I bet you can hear me, but you still can't see correctly. Am I right? Uh, hang on now, what is going on?